Gang stuff is Charles Gang. That just in case you ain't heard of me, they told me it was too late. But I promise that I'll be the first to speak. Most of these rappers, they fake. But you can't have your way to sign Burkey. Everybody said it won't be. Till they see smoke, then they realize they'd rather have turkey me. What it do, what it do? It's 903 Box, and I'm your host, Charles J. Say, man, shout out to my audience. Shout out to those that's rocking with me. Yeah, we back in the kitchen. There's a whole lot of goddamn sauce in this pot, man. Let's get to the shit. Change. Anyway, um, Raven Ford passed the test. Passed the test. Passed the goddamn test. You done it. Um, I'm going to get to what I think about it. Um, did you pass that test? I'm telling you, all I, can, all I can hear is all eyes on me. Let me tell you something, bro. Um, me against the world, all that shit. You, it, It's like some Tupac shit you did. Tonight. I'm telling you, you was Machiavelli tonight. Um, you was against it, bro. You was against And matter of fact, let me just say this. And I'm going to get to some other shit and some more shit. But I just got to point out the fakeness in fans and promoters. Uh, Raymond Ford was thrown, was thrown to the wolves. That's a fact. This, this is very similar to when Devin Haney was uh, giving that bullshit deal by Byron and had to come to top rank. And Count Bosa got paid 10 mil and he didn't get but probably 3 or 4 mil. And he had to go to uh, Australia twice and then fight Loma. It reminds me of that even though it's a one fight deal. Eddie Hearn, with all this money he tricking off and throwing away, uh, he could have easily put up the money for this fight. He didn't put up the money for the fight. Let me tell you something. Top rank, and I ain't finna call it no purse bid. I'm just gonna say a bid, because that shit is weird to me. Um, I, I don't know women wear purses, but uh, Bob Brown never wins the bid. He cheap as shit. So Eddie Hearn could have easily outbid him. Didn't believe in Raymond Ford, bro. He didn't believe he was going to beat this uh, Uzbekistan Oderbeck. Didn't believe it, bro. Didn't believe it. Didn't believe it. And not only that, this Oderbeck dude, he uh, just got signed with Top Rank. So they were signing him to make him a star over there. This was his coming out party. That's why he was announced last and Raymond Ford came out first. Even though this is supposedly Raymond Ford's country. So it sh he should be the star attraction. He should be the one that everybody wants to win. But no, this was an Odebeck show. That is a fact. And he was clearly the underdog. My heart was with him. I thought he was going to get stopped. I thought, I said, R Raymond Ford don't sit down on his punches enough. Uh, if he just be on the back foot and let this dude walk his ass down, that dude gonna throw them overhand lifts and you just ain't gonna be able to miss too many of them. I had, um, and a, another big part of the reason why I had him getting stopped, the weight cut. He had a hard time making weight. I say it's gonna be hard to survive them later rounds. Anyway, um, Eddie Hearn threw him away. And look at how when Raymond Ford won, who was the first one in this corner? Eddie Hearn. With that goddamn piece on the top of his shit. That shit get more and more that shit get more and more crooked each uh fight I see him in. That shit get that shit be crooked as shit, bro. Uh straighten up your goddamn toupee. Yeah, Eddie Hearn, bro, you didn't fuck with for you fuck with him now. But you ain't gonna put him in there with Cordina. You gonna save your UK fighter from him. So yeah, Eddie Hearn fake ass. But I just had to point that out. And Tim Bradley Tim Bradley, he say the right things. Listen, all the way up during, the, all the way up to about the sixth round, because the first three rounds, Odebeck was very dominant. But um, Tim was talking like, man, Ford gonna get stopped, and we know he had a trouble with the weight cut. I'm very interested to see these later rounds, man. Ode he was talking like he believed Odebeck would stop him, but when Raymond Ford started walking his ass down, Tim Bradley gonna say, well, you know he injured his knee. No, 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 his knee hurt. His knee hurt. Tim Bradley, you need to be slapped 37 times, bro. It ain't enough bananas in the... This motherfucker... He, he wear a knee brace. You, you didn't say nothing about his knee until Ford started mixing his... Stu Listen, back to some other shit. I'm going to get back to the fight. I just had to point out Eddie Hearn and Tim Bradley with they bullshit. 
uh, I don't know where to start first. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start with this because this really bothers me. I know this ain't this ain't none of my business. I'm just a black man in America. Uh, I understand that there was an event going on in Puerto Rico. Uh, I am a fan of Serrano. I think she's great for women's boxing. Uh, I think she she dope. She she a dope ass fighter. Hall of Famer. Uh, I like to see the Katie Taylor rematch. Um, shout out to her. But she suffered some kind of injury, and they canceled the fight. I just want to say this: this ain't my business, but I'm just saying. Uh, first and foremost, I had a problem. Listen, I understand Jake Powell has got, gotten her a lot of money, and everybody give Jake Powell credit for re, uh, putting her career back on track and putting it in the right hands, and she getting money, and Jake Powell is a good businessman, and he helped women's boxing. I get it. I get it. I get it. But Amanda Serrano should have been the headliner tonight. That's all I'm saying. This is her country. I, what the f Maybe I'm just too racial. I don't know. I don't know. They say I hate white folks. I just, I, listen. And what broke the straw off the goddamn camel's back, what made me drop my blunt and burn my goddamn thumb. Listen, he was headlining. I had a problem with that. Uh, not only did I have a problem with that, uh, when Jake Paul came out there, um, I, you would have thought it was Felix Trinidad in his prime. Um, it was Noah's. You just, ah, listen. When he knocked out this uh bus driver, this motherfucker a bus driver, uh, who nobody knew. When he knocked him out, bro, the way that crowd went crazy. I, I just. Um, I just don't get it, bro. I, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Jake, let me tell you something, bro. Because, because we're not finna play. It'll be a difference if it was Canelo. If, if it was Canelo, I get it. He's a real crossover star. I get that. I get that. Even though he ain't big as people claim he is. He ain't a bigger star as people claim he is. But people know him in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, y'all don't really know Jake Powell like that. And only because of Amanda Serrano and he's the manager. He's not a star like that, bro. When he lost, I'm going to tell you some real shit. When he was knocking out black athletes and Nate Robinson and them, yeah, he was he was up there. Especially when he knocked out Ty, Tyron Woodley. That made him a huge star. But when he lost to Tommy Fury, bro, his stock plummeted. His last fight was in Florida, and it was in an arena with about 30, probably 3,500. It wasn't in a big, and it wasn't on, was it even on pay-per-view, his last fight? And this wasn't one either. So what I'm saying is his stock has plummeted. I get it that he's helping Amanda Serrano, and I think that's great. I just think only Puerto Ricans <laughs> should headline in Puerto Rico. Is that is that is, is that too much? To add? That 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 that's just my problem with it. You know, Jake Paul ain't that goddamn great of a fighter uh, to where he should be headlining in Puerto Rico. I, I just I, I had a problem with it. I know it ain't my business, but I just had a problem. <laughs> I just don't get it. When I heard the crowd scream like that, I just I just. I just, I just, you know, it just, it just fuck with me. It fuck with me. You know, I just don't know. You know, we was once guys and all this shit now. It just seemed like the roles have reversed. You know, it's like the white boy's God now and the black man is the devil. No, could a black man get booed everywhere he go? When he go overseas, that black man get booed. But a white boy, wherever he go, they cheer for him. It's just like the revo roles have reversed. You know, we the savages now, and now they the civilized motherfuckers. No, white folks are now, they look civilized. You see them walking around and exercising and take care of, taking care of themselves. <laughs> they got gym memberships and shit, and now we the savages. So the roles have been reversed. All I'm saying is a black man can't go to no country and get cheered for. But Jake Paul, uh, I just don't get it. But, yeah. I don't know, bro. It, I, it, it made me scratch the back of my head, and I told you I dropped my blunt. I, I, you know, I just, I, you know, I, I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. Um, I, just, you know, I don't know. But anyway, 
I'm about to get caught up on that shit. But anyway, uh, in other news, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to drop a video on uh, Troy Osley. Also, shout out to Cash Flow. Let me tell you something. I like that boy. I've been knowing he had some, but uh, and also and also both Troy Osley and uh, Cash Flow Diaz, they are both in uh, the camp with Bo Mac. Bo Mac is just doing a hell of a job with fighters, and I'm just watching it. That's why I'm saying Keyshawn Davis is so dangerous, bro. Uh, his gym is is very underrated, but no, nah, Cash Flow got some. I've been knowing it. I've been knowing he got some. He got some. Troy Osley looked way better. Um, so shout out to them. Uh, Brian Norman Jr. Uh, let me tell you something, bro. Um, that's a problem. Uh, top rank finna drop you. That's for damn show. Sure. You may got one more. F I don't know, bro. They gonna throw you. They gonna either throw you in a real dangerous fight, or just get rid of you, bro. I think this your third fight with top rank. You have yet to have a good performance, bro. That Quentin Randall fight was the most. I, it, it's the most. It's one of the most distasteful. I'm gonna tell you something. That's one of the most distasteful fights in the history of boxing. That Quinn Randall Brian Norman Jr. fight was garbage. Straight garbage. And I get it. Quinn Randall wasn't letting his hands go and he was holding a lot, but you was holding too. And he just wasn't able to close the distance. I get it. Um This dude here you fought, he was a formidable opponent, but um I don't know. I get it. It was a headbutt that stopped it. I get it. And 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 I feel like that that uh the dude you fought. I I, I feel like him and his team. Um, I feel like they was anxious to end that fight because he could have kept fighting. I think you was gonna get him. And but Brian Norman Jr. You do the same shit every fight. It's just no adjustments. It's just nothing different. It's the same shit. You overthrow your shots. You smother your work. You don't have a jab at all. And you walk straight down the line with your head straight there. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's your father. I just don't know, bro. You're not getting better. I like you as a fighter. I really do, cause I think you're a real dog. I think you're a dog. You, you lacking, bro. You need another trainer. I really think that's what it is. Nothing wrong with still having your father in your in the corner. I think you need a trainer. I think you need another. You need to go holler at Cunningham now. Or holler at old Barry. Ain't that Barry Hunter? Yeah, he going to work the shit out. Yeah, because you, you do need to work harder. You need to train harder. It's just a lot. You lacking major shit. And you got you got 25 fights. Um, I don't know what's going to. I don't know what it's going to take. Every little step I take will be together. Anyway, um. I'm just disappointed with how your career going, Brian Norman Jr. Um, I'm telling you, Bob, he he got a short fuse. He got a short fuse, bro. He he gonna throw you to the wolves or just get rid of you. Um, it ain't it ain't many what's away over there at top rank, no way. I don't know, I don't know what's next for you, but I just definitely think you need to add something to your camp. I just think you need to add some. Hell, I wouldn't even mind if you work with Roy Jones. Nah, nah, I wouldn't mind if you work with Roy Jones. I wouldn't mind that. I I, I hope I hope you get better, bro. I, I hope I hope some work out for you. I wish you the best with your career, but uh, I just don't see no improvement. I see the same look. I see the same look. Same look. You start off aggressive, and then you let the boxer put you on the back foot. I don't understand that. I you terrible on the back foot. You are terrible. You need to just come forward. You are terrible on the back foot. <sighs> Disappointed. Anyway, uh, I guess I didn't touch everything else. Um, yeah, I think that I think that's about it. Yeah, that shit with Jake Powell fucked me up, bro. I, I just it it ain't that much love in the world. I just don't know. I t anyway, let me get to Raymond Ford. Okay, thought he was gonna get stopped. I've been watching this Komatov dude. I've been peeping certain shit. And he got longer arms. I was like, and he aggressive, but he could box. And he got a good amateur pedigree. He had over 200 amateur fights. 
Um, Ken Box, very experienced. Um, can fight, bro. I knew this dude. This dude, there was it wasn't no game. It wasn't no hype job. I knew Kamatov was dangerous. I knew that for sure. But Raymond Ford showed me that he got some shit inside him that we just never seen and we saw it tonight. Raymond Ford fought like he'd never fought before. He fought strong. He was a dog. And he was mean. Raven Ford remind me of Bud in the Spence fight, how he uh, threw the threw the jab from the southpaw stance and powered up on it. He was snapping his head back with that jab, hard jab, hard jab. Um, the first three rounds was dangerous, especially the first two. Common talk was trying to knock his head off. Uh, he hurt he hurt uh, Raymond Ford in the second or the third round. I don't remember which one, but he hit him with a hard uh, left hook on the top of his head. But Raymond Ford recovered very quick. After that, Raymond Ford would just, he started walking through his shit. When Raymond Ford started walking him down, oh, by the way, shout out to Coach Anthony. Very underrated trainer. He know his shit. Shout out to you. I heard you over there in the corner. Very good. And shout out to the brother that's uh, he, he your trainer too. I can't think of his name. But uh, I've been checking out Raymond Ford's channel because uh, he's been building this fight, but it's a trainer, the, the, the uh, light-skinned brother. Shout out to you too, bro, for believing in him. Shout out to that entire team. You got a great team. You got a great team. Yeah, I like old Coach Anthony. But um, I thought Raymond Ford would depend on his athleticism and his movement and speed. I thought that was what he was going to do and let him put him on the back foot. Kamatov is very dangerous on the front foot. When Raymond Ford put him on the back foot, I was shocked. I was shocked. He turned up. He turned up. And not only that, he started he started slipping a lot. He slipped a lot of his uh, Kamatov shots. Kamatov would throw little pity shots on the inside, but for the most part, them big shots, he was, he was getting out of the way of them. He was throwing the body work, I think, for show slow. It slowed Kamatov down drastically. Drastically. It by the seven, eight round, Kamatov was trying to get the hell out the way. He was on his back foot, moving, 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 moving. That is something that I did not picture happening in this fight. He took his heart. Kamatov showed a lot of heart, though. I gotta give him credit because in the middle rounds, Kamatov was slowing down. Raymond Ford was breaking him down. Somewhere in the 10th, it was the 10th or the 11th round, Kamatov just came back and just rallied and, and kind of rocked. Uh, and that's right when uh, uh, Raymond Ford got the cut under his eye. He hit him with some hard shit. So he came back and he, and he, and he, and he fought real hard. But listen, the jab was super accurate. It was snapping his head. And I'm, I'm going to say this too. The hooks to the body was damaging him. But let me tell you this. I don't think people understand the power because Bud was hurting hurting Earl with that power jab. People don't understand that power jab. That's just, when your head is snapping back, especially when you're moving back and your head is snapping back, uh, yeah, that can wear you down, bro. That can wear you down fast. That's why I love Winky Wright, bro. Winky, Winky Wright wasn't nothing but a jab and a straight left. That's all he was with that with that tight ass shell. But that's one of my favorite motherfucking fighters. That hard ass jab from the southpaw stance. Winky had a hard ass jab. That motherfucker had a granite chin too. But anyway, um, that snapping jab was was a major factor in this fight. The combinations was you just was a dog, bro. You just was a dog. You just was a dog. And if shit was real, you would be a super. Well, I ain't gonna say a superstar, but you would definitely be a star in boxing. This fight should definitely make you a star, but it won't. But it should make you a star in boxing. And I feel like your name will grow after this fight, but not like it should. It was this was meant for Kamatov to shine. Bro, Triple G, they had him on speed. That it, it was gonna they were gonna take pictures the next day in Slovakia. I'm telling they was gonna have a commercial ready for him over here. He was gonna be in one of them uh yeah, yeah, some shit like that. And they, his nickname Bruce Lee already. They were gonna have him some shit like that, like he the new Bruce Lee. I'm telling you, bro. 
this was the dude they was building up to be a top rank bro and be a star every everything just when you look at stylistic and i just gotta be honest bro raymond ford has fought tougher competition but he struggled at times this dude is 11 and 0 with 10 knockouts very precise and he just not a puncher the motherfucker got a high ring iq the motherfucker can punch but he can box too it was just dangerous bro it was just dangerous i just i just didn't i i it was one of them fights. This was one of them fights where Raymond Ford had to just prove everybody wrong, bro. Most fans didn't have him winning this fight, bro. Most, most didn't, bro. We capping if we do say that. Raymond Ford has had performances where he struggled. He just has had perform. I love his last uh, performance against uh, Magdalena or whatever his name was. That was a good performance. But he's had performances that wasn't up to par. I'm just going to say that. Shout out to Shakur for being in his training camp. And shit like that. I definitely seen some things. I love your mid-range game. Raymond Ford, his hit and the uppercuts on the inside. Oh my God. The uppercuts, uh <sighs> another thing, you got very good defense on the inside. See, that's something we never knew about Raymond Ford. You show so many tools to your game. You got a good ass inside game, and your defense is good in the pocket. He wasn't expecting that. He was not expecting you to bang with him on the inside. And he got long arms, so you smothered his punches. It was a beautiful game plan. And not only that, it's just that what you showed me tonight, bro, um, you got that shit that I just look for. Uh, when my legs ain't working no more, uh, when my speed ain't as fast no more, and I can't show my athleticism, and, I'm, and I ain't as fast no more, and I, my head movement ain't all that no more, uh, when you ain't got nothing left, just gonna go for broke bro you just gonna fight it out and so this the first time i've seen you in a fight and that's what you did and i knew you would have to do that to beat this dude i didn't think you was gonna outbox him didn't think you was gonna outbox him and that was gonna it, it, you wasn't gonna get the decision like that you wasn't gonna get the decision letting him walk you down for 12 rounds and you just even if you was to outbox him you wouldn't get the decision he would get credit for being an aggressor but when you start walking him down let me tell you something i bet them score them, them motherfuckers who do the scorecards i bet them motherfuckers drop their mouth like that dog on family guy when raymond for because they was ready to score every that, uh up the round four they had uh commentar winning every round because he was the aggressor but when Raymond Ford started walking his ass down, now y'all got to change some things. And when Tim started saying the tenth level, oh, I don't know who's winning. It's a close fight. I don't know. But when you you sealed the you sign sealed delivered, bro, in the twelfth round with thirty with twenty seconds left, the uppercut. And when you threw that motherfucker, you threw a Tommy Hearns jab. You that bitch was a that motherfucker was a long goddamn jab. Yeah, it, it damn that looked like you remember on Space Jam when uh Michael Joy when he was uh when the motherfucker arm stretched out and he ducked the body. Yeah, your shit stretched like that. No, 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 your shit stretched and you hit him with that long that shit was like a slingshot. And his shit snapped. And then he curled and you caught him with the left hook. The left hook caught him flush. You ran into it. And before you could throw the other left hook, the ref stopped it. A-plus performance. I don't care what nobody say at this point. Um, I'm going to have to uh, rearrange my pound for pound. Like, you, going, you going on there, bro. Motherfuckers can say, ah, oh, nah, three. He just won one world title. It's just a common tie. He beat one good fight. Nah, bro. This was one of them fights. In my opinion, that was a legacy fight. In my opinion, I didn't. A part of me didn't think Raymond Ford was ready for a fight like this. That dude was dangerous. Cause you're dealing with more than a puncher. You're dealing with somebody that can think too. He was sneaky. He got sneaky power. Them left, them overhand lefts was sneaky as fuck. Um, and he had good speed on it. Um, and it, like I said, he got them long ass arms. I just, I just, um, yeah, this was a legacy fight. I definitely think uh, you got to go somewhere on my pound for pound list after a performance like this. You definitely go on my pound for pound list after a performance like this. Um, definitely. Hands down, without a doubt. 
I I knew you had the skills. I knew you had fast hands, some of the fastest hands in boxing. You got grit too, though. You got grit, and you prove to everybody I'm a dog too, though. It can get ugly in there. Yeah, yeah. See, that's I, I just love it when 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 the aggressive fighter when they realize. The boxer done, I done took your best shit now and walk in your ass down. The Kamatov was in shock. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe that he was on the back foot and Raymond Ford was coming for his neck, walking through his shit. That's that shit. That's that shit. I'm telling you, bro, it's like you went numb. From round 7 to 12, you went numb. Them shots that he was landing that was rocking you, that shit quit. Rock. You started walking through that shit. You started walking through that shit, so... Uh, 126. I think uh, yeah, you did. You need to go to 130. Uh, Eddie Hearn ain't gonna let you fight Cordino. The fight to me is a Shaky Foster. Oh, Shaky Foster versus Raymond for hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. That's the fight at 130. That is the fight. Oh, Prince Albert Bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, them the two fights I would like to see you against. Navarrete going to 35 and at this point um Navarrete two fights from uh he he two fights from losing bro Mertilla uh a beat Navarrete Yeah 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 Mar Mertilla beat Navarrete right now But anyway uh shout out to you pimping um <laughs> with the cut and everything bro you I'm definitely happy for you bro I'm, I'm definitely proud of you I'm proud of you, bro. You, you prove you prove me wrong, and you prove the boxing world wrong. And at this point, bro, uh, I gotta say that Ray, Ray Savage. I mean, I mean, I mean Raymond Ford definitely passed the test. This is nine hundred three boxing. I'm your host, Charles Jack. That I'm out.